on your whiteboard, I want you to draw this picture. And I'm going to ask you to find P, which is perimeter. And remember, our formula for perimeter um, can be add up all the sides. It could also be 2 times the length plus 2 times width. And the area is multiplied by so uh, 15 and 20, right? Yep. P stands for what, guys? Uh, perimeter. So it means all the way around. Like, So if you had a doggy in your backyard, you would put up a perimeter fence so he did not get out of the backyard. If you put up an area fence, that would be like, boom, like the whole backyard, there's a fence on and that's not what we're doing. Yeah. When, you think of, when you think of area or hear the word area, think of like area rug that maybe you have in like your bedroom or your living room or by the area by the door. Okay, good. So when we add up all of the sides, what do you guys get for perimeter? 70 miles, 70 feet, good. Your unit of measure is very important. Okay, now that we've found perimeter, I want you to find area. Area is going to be length times width. And if you forget what that formula is, what can you look on? What can you look on? Your reference sheet. Okay, go ahead and solve that. Thank you, Liam. Yes, you can use box method to figure that out. So you're going to do 15 and 20. And then what did you got? 300 inches. 300 inches. Awesome sauce. So what is greater, the perimeter or the area? The, the area. The area. Area is always going to be greater because it's this full part, whereas perimeter, again, is all the way around. Yes. If you got an area fence, the area is all the things inside of it, too, right? Like everything in that square? Yeah, the big place would be so important. Yeah, so if you got an area fence, the entire, there wouldn't even be a backyard. Would yes, be it would be covered. Normally when we talk about area, we talk about like a carpet or tile going down or something that fills a whole space. Like we went our, um, they had, other mom and dad, they had to, um, like for our room, they had to do um, like for our floor in our room. Uh-huh. They had to fill help the person the area of uh, uh, yeah because let's say you're getting like tile in your new kitchen they're not going to come and put tile just like around the floor and leave the middle of it bare they're going to put tile over the whole area over the whole floor unless you're going to do okay. it here's another one i'm going to give you 10 feet and five feet and I want you to find the perimeter. Jackson, how'd you get your answer, bud? I added 10 plus 10 and 5 plus 10. And you got, what was your answer? 30. 30 what, buddy? Feet. Feet, perfect. 30 feet is the whole way around, right? But what if, um, so let's say this is a bedroom, right? And you're going to put molding, you know, like the, like the border that meets the, the floor and the wall. You're going to put molding all the way around. You would need 30 feet. But now let's see, this is your bedroom and you want to put down carpet all in this area. We have to do area, length, times width, 
Liam, what numbers are you going to multiply? It's 10 times 5. You cross out. Um, 10 times 5, and we got 50. 50 what, bud? Um, it's, yeah, and the, because we're finding area, it's going to be squared feet. Okay, go ahead and erase your whiteboard. She didn't say drop your whiteboard. We're going to do something kind of funky. Let's see, like, your parents have all of this cardboard at your house and you and your sibling decide to take it outside and you're going to build like a cool fort if this is too if this is too hard you don't have to draw it but just pay attention to the perimeter numbers that i write so i'm going to see that this is two feet this is three three five seven three and four. So what would be the perimeter of your cardboard fort that you make? Perimeter means to multiply length times width or what does it mean? It means to add. Add what? All of those numbers. Yep, go for it. Can I do it on the board? Nope, do it on your whiteboard. Let me see that you can do it. Okay, I hold your answer because people are still working. Thank you. Yep. Noah, sit down, please. And don't share your answer till we're ready. This way, everybody can work at it. Guys, please stop. Thanks. Hey, Hunter, tell me what you did, buddy. I added seven, three, four, two, three, three, five. Okay. I want to show you something. Three and three. I'm just going like, I'm starting at 12 and going like around. Three and three and five. And then seven. And then three. And then four. And then two. Okay. We've done something in the past years of your years in elementary school where if you have to add multiple things, you can like chunk them. So three and three is six. Five and seven is what? What's five and 12. seven? Twelve. Three and four is seven. seven. Okay, we have to can't forget the two. Now we're gonna add these numbers. Eighteen. Hold on. Eighteen. Eighteen and seven is. What's eighteen and seven more? Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Okay. Now there's multiple strategies you can use to figure this out, but this is just one way you can do it too. Okay, so perimeter is all the way around. Nope, we're keep going, buddy. Okay, this way we've got everything done. All right, go ahead and erase your whiteboard. I want you to find perimeter first. When you got it, just put your board up. Thank you. Charlie, what did you get, babe? Hi. 
Okay, so we get 35, oops, 35, 35, 21, and 21. 5 and 5 is 10, 11, 12. We have to regroup. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 112 feet is our perimeter. Give me two thumbs up if you got 112 feet. Awesome sauce. What's the other thing we need to find? Area. Area. How do we do that, Liam? Schedule. Just tell me, bud. So you make box method and uh -huh. you do 30 and 5 and 20 in one. Okay, so our, but our two name numbers we're going to multiply is 35 and 21. And, 20, and 20 times 30 is 600. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me catch up. Let me catch up. 30 and 5 and 20 and 1. Okay. And 2 times 3 is 6. We add two zeros. What's 20 times 5? 100. Okay. And then this is 30, and this is 5. And then what do we call these? Partial Product. products. Good. So we're going to add up all of our partial products. So 600, 100, 35, 537. So 735. 5, 35 square feet is what the area would be. Questions about that, guys? No? Okay. We're going to get a little bit trickier. Go ahead and erase your board. I'm going to tell you that the area of the shape is going to be 72 square feet, um, but I only know one side of that, and this is eight feet. I don't know what this other side is. So how would you find the missing side of this shape? Work it out on your board, show me. Noel, what did you got? Nine. nine. Because we know that eight times nine is seventy-two. 72 okay. Ooh, we divide because thank you, Jackson. Division is opposite of multiplying, and we had an unknown number, so we would also divide to figure that out. Um, and then once we figured out that this is nine and this is nine, go ahead and find that perimeter. Good. Jack, what did you get, buddy? 34 feet. 34 feet is our perimeter. Awesome. Okay, go ahead and erase your board. Super similar to the question we just had. I'm telling you that our whole area is 96 square inches, but I only know part of what my length is for my shape. So I'm asking you to find what the width is. B 
Bailey, what did you get for an answer? Eight. Eight inches. How did you figure that out? Because 12 times 8 equals 96. Okay. You can also do 96. Good job. 96 divided by 12, right? And that gives you 8? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and erase your whiteboards. That's a really good review on perimeter and area. For fourth grade and for our quiz tomorrow and for FSA, you guys really need to know this basic part of area and perimeter, okay? Noah? Yeah. Yeah, very tricky. But that's not something we're going to put our brains to right now because I don't want to confuse everybody from what we just kind of mastered, okay? Um, the other thing that's going to be on our quiz tomorrow is converting some measurements. So let's say um, there is a boy and he grows pumpkins. And he takes them to the fair because he grows like the biggest pumpkins. The first year he went to the fair, he had a pumpkin and it weighed 144 pounds. Okay. So go ahead and write that on your board. The second year he went to the fair, he had a pumpkin and it weighed 176 pounds. What I want to know is how many more ounces this pumpkin weighed than that one. Something that we do know, we know that for every pound, there's 16 ounces. So there's two steps you got to do here. How many more ounces is this pumpkin than that pumpkin? So you got to find the difference in pounds first and then convert that to ounces. So go ahead and find your difference in pounds first. And then show me what you got. If we're subtracting the pumpkins, can I just go like this and subtract? No. no. What's wrong with that? We don't what else is wrong with this? If we're not even talking about ounces or pounds, what else is wrong with this, Charlie? Um, is less than yeah. When you're subtracting, make sure the bigger number's on top. So it should look something like this, 176 minus 144, oh, wait. right? Hold on, Jack. Jack, what's 6 minus 4? Uh, 6 minus 4 right? 32 pounds. So his pumpkin this year weighed 32 more pounds than his pumpkin last year. So we figured out that difference. Now we have to take our pounds and make it into ounces. ounces. There are 16 pounds in one ounce. So if we are going from something bigger, pounds, to something smaller, ounces, we need to multiply. What numbers are we multiplying? 16 times 32. What is a strategy you can use to figure this out? Box method, go for it. 16 and a pound. So 10 and 6 and 30 and 2. Work that out. Add up your partial products. Give me a thumbs up when you've got it. Not correct. Not correct. Double check your math. 
Work it out. Double check your math. Okay. Okay. Three times one is three, and I'm going to add my two zeros. What's three times six? And I add my one zero. What's two times ten? Twenty. And two times six is twelve. Now I'm going to add up all my partial products. Three hundred, hundred eighty, twenty, and twelve. We have two, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Three group, so it'd be five hundred. Five hundred and twelve ounces. ounces. Did you figure out your mistake? I knew that it was five and twelve. Mm. I wrote four instead of twelve. I think you forgot to regroup in your brain. Oh, I did. Mm-hmm. I forgot. I turned the five into So, his pumpkin this year weighs 32 more pounds, which is also equivalent to how many ounces? 512. 512 ounces. Good. Awesome. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and erase your board. You're gonna draw this chart on your board. Because tomorrow on the quiz, there's a chart that you have to fill in. So we're going to do an example of it. You're going to need nine boxes total. Here it's going to be yards. The middle box is going to be feet. And then your last box is going to be inches. tell you that one yard equals who knows how many feet are in one yard three. jack okay three feet mm -hmm. and then in three feet how many inches are there 36. 16. 36. wait hold on there's 12 inches in, each. in one foot and how many feet do we have three three, three. So we have to do 3 times 12, which is 36. Awesome. Okay. So this table shows, guys, please stop calling out so people can hear my words. Thank you. So this chart tells us that 1 yard is equal to 3 feet, which is equal to 36 inches. Do you follow? Yes? Okay. So here's our next part. I'm going to put two yards, and I want you on your whiteboard to tell me how many feet are in two yards and how many inches are in two yards. And just hold it up when you got it. Thank you. Okay. There are three feet in one yard, so we have to multiply two times three, and we got six. six feet. So now we have six feet, and we have to multiply six times 12, which is 72. 72. Okay. What if I said there is four yards? So now I want to know how many feet are in four yards, and then once you get your feet, how many inches is that? Go ahead and try to work that out on your board.
Good job, Liam. What did you get for feet, Liam? 144. Oh, I got 12 for feet, and I got 144 for Okay, because you're going to do 4 times 3 to get 12. And then what did you get for inches? 144. Because you're going to do 12 times 12. 12. Awesome. Okay, go ahead and clear off your board. Any questions about this chart, guys? No? Liam? I just have one question. Uh huh. So, well, hey, guys, I'm trying to listen to Liam's question. Let's be quiet so we can hear his question. Go ahead. I just got confused on this that if you're dividing like 12 times 80 something, like 84, um, would you multiply the 1 first or the 2 first? If you're multiplying like 12 times 84? Yeah. If you do, no. So you would do no, divide, divide yeah, 12 divide. divided by 84? Yeah, would you divide the 1 times? No, no, no. Oh, you do the whole number. So 12 times what number gets as closest to 84? Uh, so let's work it out. 12 times. Let's think of our multiples of 12. So our multiples of 12 are 12. 24, 48, what comes next? Seven. 72, Two. what comes after 72? Add 12 84. more, 84. 84. So this shows me that 12 times one, two, three, four. Six. No, we forgot something, we forgot 60, right? So 12 times 1 is 12, times 2 is 24, 3 is 48, or 4 is 48. We forgot 3, 2. What, did, what else did we forget, guys? No! Add 12 more to 24. 36. Okay. So 12 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 12 times 7 is 84 with a remainder of 0. Okay. Okay? Remember when you're skip counting your multiples that you are either adding the like this number to the next number or you're counting on your fingers or you're doing a correct strategy so you're not leaving out any of the multiples. Okay? Let's do just a few more practice questions with converting measuring. Yeah. Yeah, but you're working with different numbers, honey. Okay. On your whiteboard. We have one mile. How many feet? Let's look at our reference chart. How many feet are in one mile? 5,280. 5,280. 5, so how would I find out if there's five miles? Like if we run five miles, how many feet is that? What would you do? We are going from something bigger, feet, to some, or mile, to something smaller, feet. So we would multiply. multiply. So what are you going to multiply? Oh, I'm Okay, work it out on your board. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Um, you don't, but if you know how to do it correctly the other way, you totally can. I just want to make sure you're getting the answer right. You would do 5 times 5,280. 5 times 5 is 25, and we're going to add three zeros. 5 times 2 is 10, and we're going to add two extra zeros. 
5 times 8 is 40, and we add an extra 0. Now what do we do? Add them all up. We have 25,000, 1,000, 400. Remember, it's super important that you line up your place values, okay? If you don't, then you might get the wrong answer. Did you guys get this for an answer? Yes. yes. So 26,000. 400 feet are in how many miles? Five. five. Good. Oh, so if I do five mile run, that's how far I'm going. That's how many feet you're going, yep. Let's do something hard. Let's say in five miles, there's 26,400 feet. How many yards is that? We're going from feet to yards, so we're going to divide by, we're going to divide. Okay. Uh, so feet, so we hold on, Shh. feet to yards, we're going to divide by three. Colton, please stop. Please stop. We're going to divide by three. If there is... 3 feet equals 1 yard. So we're going to divide this number because this is feet. And it takes 3 of them to equal 1 yard. See if you can do this. I don't know. Can 3 go into 2? No. So we got to make it 26. 3 times what number gets us closest to 26? 8. 8. 8? What's 8 times 3? 24. 24. How much do we have left over? 2. 2. What do we do now? Down four. Okay. 3 times what number gets us 24? Eight. What is it? 8. 8. 24. We have 0 left over. Now we bring down this 0. Does 3 times anything get a 0? No. So you got to keep doing this till you bring down all the zeros. So 26,400 feet equals 8,800 yards. Okay? All right. Show me how you feel.